Hello ladies and gentlemen, and I'm back. Finally managed to get myself a new laptop, and finally able to start doing videos again. Now if anybody missed me, thank you for caring. So originally on my original video, I said that I would do a um, Survivor Series review and see if I can catch Raw. I'm going to make this short for both of them because um, I started doing a long lengthy thing for both of them but honestly after I saw what the um, Off The Rope show said in British Fist before I managed to look at them both and I did catch some, um, um, Survivor Series honestly Survivor Series to me and I'm going to say both of these sh both the show as well as the pay-per-view Survivor Series for me felt very desperate it was really a desperate act. It was so lackluster what I saw. Many repeated matches, many matches that looked like they had to try and struggle with it, to, to, to do whatever is possible to try and get as much interest in, into it. Now that sounds like it'd be great. I mean, they're doing their best to try and make the Survivor Series preview, I mean, pay-per-view great. They're trying to push it, they're trying to make something interesting, but they didn't. It felt so forced, the way I saw it, and so repeated, and so lackluster that I heard the British Fist also when they did their Survivor Series review, and Mr. Parkin and NJ do not do ratings of grades anymore, which I can understand. They've reached a point where, just like the Off The Rope Show, they don't need to do grades. I'll still be doing grades for a little while longer, and then eventually I'm not going to do them anymore. But the British Fist said C minus, which I agree, and more. I actually believe the show was a D plus show. There were some good actions in there, but there were some bad ones. I mean, honestly, it was great to see two Survivor Series matches five on five. They were both not that bad at all. The second one where the end with Randy Orton and The Miz. I remember seeing the Off The Rope show talking, and this was a slug daddy, talking about where the Miz looked like he was much better as a heel, and they were forcing him as a face, which I did agree, but I did see ahead of time that because they have so few baby faces, and I believe the slug daddy might agree, they're running out of people to work with. They have no one that's legitimate in the main event scene. They don't. So turning Miz's face was pretty much the only option they had. Because they already had Kopi as a face and they gave up trying to push him after what happened with him and Randy Orton. Stupid, stupid. Pretty much, I saw the video. But honestly, they didn't have much of a choice with The Miz. It doesn't matter if you agree with it or not. And honestly, The Miz is a much better heel. He is. But honestly, they didn't have a choice. They didn't. So when it came down to it, they, and when it came to Raw, and I did watch Raw when it, they started dealing with The Miz and David Otunga. I'm kind of mixing Survivor Series up with um, Raw a little bit here, ladies and gentlemen. I saw that match, and I saw the people chanting boring. At first, I thought it was something else. But then I realized people are not interested in The Miz. Not the way he is now. Unless they do something to give him more legitimacy as a face, it's not going to work. He'll have to revert back to heel eventually. Unless they give him something to do in the main event scene or give him a very good feud, but they're not going to. It's going to be that bad. Now, when it comes to Raw, and I did see Raw, and when I said in many of my reviews for Raw, what they did with John Cena almost a year ago, when it came to Eve, when it came to Zack Ryder with him, they weren't willing to go all the way with this. They weren't willing to have a confrontation between John Cena and Zack Ryder. They weren't able to do it, and they weren't willing to do it this time around and I said before I don't agree with the storyline it sucks it's an AJ ripoff from TNA they're just doing a twist on it making it a little bit different doing a scandal bit I'm actually quite bored with it but I said clearly in my reviews that it doesn't matter if you're bored with it or not the question is going to be, going to be are they going to go through with it or not just like I said in some of the reviews where I was a little graphic talking about a man and a woman having some type of relationship where it becomes sexual. But when it comes down to it, 
If they're not willing to go all the way with it, what was the point of doing it anyway? Even if it was a terrible storyline, and this is. We still don't know how the twist is with Dolph Ziggler. My guess is they're going to do something with him where maybe John Cena may get the money in the bank. This is my guess, which it probably is wrong. But anyway, they decided to finally pursue it, which you can say is a mixed bag. You can say, oh, this is crap. It sucks. Why are they even doing this? You have perfect legitimacy for that. But for others, not just talking about the casual fan, maybe some marks would say, or smart marks, which is kind of stretching it. Finally, they're doing something different with John Cena in the sense that instead of doing a storyline that we know sucks and then they'll cut it off when they should never did it, let them do it anyway because we have nothing to lose. We're bored with him as it is because of his character. And we need something. If this leads somewhere, fine. Maybe it'll give us some level of interest. If it doesn't lead anywhere, well, you know what? At least they're willing to go somewhere. Because them cutting it off every time with John Cena when it became something romantic was even more depressing than him actually doing it. So in that respect, at least you get something. I'm not agreeing with it. I've said it already. It's a sucky piece of crap storyline with AJ. If it were with somebody a lot more substantial, it would have been interesting. Now I'm going I'm still doing Raw right now because I'm finished with Survivor Series. I gave it a D plus. But for Raw, when it came down to Ryback, I agree with the Select Daddy. And I said this earlier, give Ryback a mouthpiece and I agree with the British Fist and the Off the Rope show. Ryback is not the type of person to talk. And you saw this in the beginning of the show. It sucked. It was the worst thing you could see. Seeing Ryback struggle with what they gave him. Maybe he may get better later. But he looked like he was struggling. He just doesn't have the type of, not character-wise, but experience to be able to talk. He needs someone to teach him how to talk properly. One of the five tools you need is mic skills. If you can't talk to people into the seats, there's no point in putting you in the ring. And honestly, he can't talk. At least not right now. He does not have the experience. He needs a manager. Who do I think should be the best manager for him? Um, that's a good question. There's several people you can talk to. That um, Several people you can talk about. Not talk to. Talk about. That would be a good manager for Ryback. The person I would expect that's already on the roster that could do this would be Paul Heyman. Turn Paul Heyman face. I know that's stretching it because he is working with CM Punk. But what could have happened months ago, instead of using CM Punk with Paul Heyman, they could have stuck him with Ryback. In a sense, that would be kind of a rehashing what happened with Brock Lesnar. Ryback is a total monster. He is what we know as a Goldberg ripoff. But it would be perfect to have a Paul Heyman do this. You need someone that's legitimate. Another person who would have been legitimate that never had to wrestle but would be perfect and it would be crazy but it might be perfect would be Goldberg himself. He doesn't need to wrestle anymore and I know people will say you got to be kidding me. We rather see Goldberg than right back anyway. True. I'd rather see a Goldberg character come back than keep a Ryback character may not last long because they don't package him properly. But you know what? If you want to try and get someone over that's already being talked as a Goldberg rehashing, put Goldberg with him. Say that Goldberg got pissed off at him and then have some situation of a storyline that Goldberg gets attacked by someone, maybe a CM Punk, and Ryback wins over Goldberg and Goldberg becomes temporarily his manager. It may actually be the best option. It is. I would rather see a Ryback working with a Goldberg or maybe a Paul Heyman than working by himself because the people are going to lose interest in him. He can't talk. Ryback cannot talk right now. He, Like I said, he could probably learn how to be a good talker later. But his character has been packaged as a monster where he's not supposed to be talking and it sucks. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Now when it comes to... Um, Caitlyn with Oksana. I saw the match. 
I saw Oksana being found as the person that was causing all the mess, which was stupid. I said earlier that if it was going to work with Eve, they needed Eve to be the one grabbing power. Having Eve be completely exonerated for this is the most stupidest thing they could have done. Because if they had done the storyline like I thought, that where Eve would try and over try to kick out Teddy and overthrow Booger T eventually would have been a better idea than just having a random attack by someone who's not even related. And then when Caitlyn finally finds out and then they do the match on Raw where there was no build, no real care. Honestly, it was the most stupidest thing they could have done. They made the Divas Championship irrelevant. They made the storyline they've been keeping for months irrelevant. And now when it comes down to it, people are just so tired of it. What, what they've been saying and what I've heard that Triple H wants to get rid of it, I'm actually begging him. If Triple H could actually see my video right now, I would say, Mr. Levesque, I'm not calling you Triple H. You deserve to be called your real name. God. <laughs> but Mr. Levesque, Please, since Vincent Kennedy McMahon is not interested in divas, since your wife is not interested in divas, since basically your talent relations is not interested in your divas, and I know you're not interested in your divas, please disband and close out the divas. Just don't have any divas there except for managers. Let your divas become managers. Look at Rosa Mendez. You can say a lot about Rosen. I've said many times before, she's good looking, hell of a damn good looking woman, but she does not have the type of sex appeal. Eve does. Eve would be a better manager than Rosa Mendez, but right now we have no managers. Very few. Ricky's no longer a manager. Currently, Rosa and Paul Heyman are the basic managers we have. Let's have more. Give the Divas managerial positions. Let them still go out. Let them be eye candy. Let them be seen. And it's better that way. Now, when it came to, um, who else? Kobe Kingston. There's nothing there. It is absolutely empty. I feel sorry for Kobe right now. And particularly Wade Barrett. Wade, who stated when he first started, I am going to be the world champion. Well, actually, um, going to be WWE Champion. That's my goal. But then they reduce him down to going for the Intercontinental Champion against Kofi. I believe it's going to already passed where it was um, Wednesday Night Main Event. I'm not sure, ladies and gentlemen. It's possible it happened. I haven't watched it. But you know what? I really feel bad for both of them. Kofi has been buried for years. Wade Barrett, who just came back and had technically jobbed to Sheamus and then fully jobbed to Sheamus and then fully jobbed and technically jobbed to Randy Orton. It's the saddest thing you could see. They're burying their talent. It's so bad. I, I, I can't say any more about it. Next, Brodus Clay. <sighs> Woo! This... This was so sad. You know, like I said in one of my videos before, and many of my videos afterwards, one, I say Brodus Clay should have never been turned off. And since he was put on a track where he sucked. Well, well now how am I saying? I'm not saying suck. I'm sorry. How can I describe it? Because I'm very upset about this. Brodus Clay was giving a terrible character because of what he said. But he made the best of it and got over. The girl said it with him. And one of them I actually really like very much. Which is Naomi. And I really like Cameron. But I like Naomi. Who basically. Naomi. Who went through. And Cameron. Who went through Tough Enough. And who went through basically NXT. Both of them have not done anything on the roster. And Tough Enough when it came to Cameron. She got kicked out in the beginning. Naomi. Didn't make it all the way, but she did show a great showing. And both of these women together have drawn men, who is demographically the one thing they need. The 18 to 30, I believe 18 to 35 year olds, I'm sorry if I'm wrong with the numbers, but honestly, we don't draw in men of that caliber anymore. We don't. 
even with the divas there, but the divas are not structured that way to bring in men. They're not sexy enough. The girls have shown enough sex appeal that they have drawn men in. Brodus Clay himself, who's been stuck with a terrible gimmick, made it as good as possible to make it think of a Rikishi character. He's not Rikishi, doesn't come close, but he's thought of as one in some form or fashion. And they all got over, all three of them. And then they got dropped. Having to see Brodus Clay constantly job shows how lack of vision the WWE has now. It is that bad. It is terrible. It is so badly seen. I, I can't even think of how dumb they've become, especially after this campaign. The campaign has destroyed the WWE right now. They are desperate, particularly what happened in this Raw. It was highly re repetitive, and then they tried to be go become over the top which they failed. It is that bad. They have gone so over the top to try and bring people in after what happened in the election that they have done such a terrible job at it. Their writers have done a terrible job. Vincent Kennedy McMahon himself has done a terrible job. Brodus Clay has been one of the people that have been bringing in the families as well as men to a certain extent. And now they've been jobbing. Now the girls just don't even look interested. Oh, they'll still cheer, they'll still jump. But if you're someone who can see in their faces how bad they're structured, how bad they've been, their man that they're working with is jobbing, you can tell they don't like it. They can't stand it. But they have to still put on a good show. And one time you can see that they did show a great upset interest. Naomi, yeah, and especially Cameron too. So it's just sad to see this with another talent. Now, when it comes to Antonio Vizarro, just as bad. With R-Truth, just as bad. R-Truth should have won the U.S. Championship at Survivor Series, and he didn't. If you want to try and make Antonio more interesting, he has to lose to win. Because we haven't seen any type of storyline with these two. We need to see more aggression and more interest in Antonio, but him winning didn't solve anything. It didn't. It just showed how lack of luster this is. And right now, both of them are screwed. No matter if they continue this, and they're going to continue this storyline, which isn't even a storyline. It's just sticking these two together to see if it sticks because they have nothing else to do. Ladies and gentlemen, for my review of both Survivor Series as well as Raw, and I will put in the title, Raw Review with a Little Survivor Series in. I can tell you with the Survivor Series, it was a desperate effort to try and make up for everything that's been going on. They tried to go over the top and it failed. There might have been a couple of good things in it, but it was not enough to save the show. A D plus for me. When it came to Raw, and this Raw was so bad, so incredibly bad, even what they're trying to do with The Miz. Even what they did with AJ and John Cena. Like I said, no matter if you like the storyline or not. At least they're trying to do it. But it's so dead. It makes no difference. What they're trying to do with Ryback is a disaster. He needs a mouthpiece. What they're doing with CM Punk. Especially when it came to the celebration. Wasn't enough. This show also was a D+. Both shows were so bad. I can't even describe how bad it was. So I hope you liked this Zane's view. Subscribe and comment. And the next video I'm going to be doing is going to be the debate of the week. And you're going to be thinking, wait a minute, this is crazy. What the hell are you thinking? The two people you're talking about, which is one but two, you got to be kidding me. Why would you do something like this? Well, you know what? We need to have this. This is how I believe. You will see from this debate of the week who is the better wrestler and character. I won't say who it is, but you will see the light and dark side of the force. The light and dark side of vanilla. You will understand Ice Ice Baby.